Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. <laughs> Oh, she's fine, thanks. We brought her home this morning. Well, that's good. Yeah, you got to hand it to her. Doc said there wasn't a peep out of her. Behaved better than most grown-ups. <laughs> Proud father, huh? <laughs> oh, sure. If you had any kids, you know what it's like. <laughs> Mrs. Weiss here yet? Oh, I don't think so. Did Quine come in? I haven't seen him. Sandy's always been brave about things like that, though. Even the dentist doesn't bother her. Hi, Ben. Oh, hi. Hi, Quine. How's Sandy, Dave? Uh, don't ask him. You'll get a lecture on brave children. <laughs> oh, she's fine, thanks. Didn't you have me... <laughs> Never mind. Her? I believe you. <laughs> Oh, hello, Miss Weiss. Hello, Lieutenant Guthrie. Now, how are you feeling? Oh, much better, thank you. You remember Sergeant Quine, Sergeant Asher? Oh, yes, how do you do? How do you do, Miss Weiss? I'm sorry I'm late. Seems like there's so many things to do now that Daddy is gone. Oh, well, that's all right. Here, this will do. <laughs> Lieutenant, did you find the men that did this awful thing? Well, we're not sure. We picked up one man that fits your description. Oh, but there were... Two men, Lieutenant. Yeah, I know, but uh, if we can get one, we can usually get the other. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience <laughs> room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they're sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Okay, keep it moving right over here to the end of the stage. Come on, boys, move it. Now turn and face front, hands at your sides, and look straight out through the screen. That's it. Now when I call your number, step out. Keep facing front and talk up so everybody out there can hear you. I want all those people out there on the other side of the screen to get a good look at you and be able to hear what you say. So stand up and talk up. All right, number one, Ernest Fitz, grand larceny. Okay, Ernie, step out. <clears throat> well, uh, Ernest, Ernest, if you please. All right, Ernest. What's your address? Well, my mailing address is uh, 1263 South Griffith Road, Miami, Florida. And when I ask for your address, I want to know the address where you slept last. Oh, uh, 614 Oak Lane. House or apartment? It's an apartment. I'm uh, staying with a friend of mine. And we know all about your friend. Oh, really? How long have you been in town, Ernest? Yeah. I think oh, that's days. one of the men that holds one. Oh, you sure? Cadillac. I would like to see him closer. Uh, uh, Whitley's calling when you'll be able to get a better well, look at him. Season. When were you in Palm Springs? Well, last year. I was For how long? <laughs> well, really, now, must we go through this foolishness? How long were you in Palm Springs? Well, about three months. What kind of work do you do? I'm a salesman. What kind? A very good one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Harry. What do you sell? Uh, real estate, uh, securities. What firm do you represent? What firm? Yes, what company? Well, I suppose you would call it uh, my own. Business been good, Ernest? Oh, it's very good. Well, that is up until uh, this afternoon. Okay, Ernest, step back. Number two, Herbert Emery, robbery. Where do you live, Herbert? We are in Far East Federal. Where do you work? I ain't working right now. Good looking, though. What were you doing at 434 East Collins early this morning? Looking. Just looking, that's all. For work? Yeah. I go out early in the morning, line up places to ask for a job during the day. But the store wasn't open for business and you were inside. The door was unlocked. I was going to close it. Oh. Where are you from, Emery? Aragon. You ever been in trouble before? No, sir, nothing serious. How old are you? Forty-one. I ain't in any trouble now, am I? A little. Oh, I ain't done nothing. The door was open. I was going to close it. You own a car? No, sir. How long you been in town? Been there two weeks. All right, Emery, step back. Number three, Roger Fitzgerald, open charge. Okay, Roger, stand up straight. That's it. 
Where do you live? 4677 North 40. You own a car? No, sir. You know that. I was waiting for a bus when you picked me up. Where'd you get the typewriters, Roger? I found them. Where? In the bushes. You find a lot of typewriters? Yeah, quite a few. We found 12 more typewriters in your room, Roger. There were that many? Yeah. You ever been picked up before? On this town. How long you been in town, Roger? About eight months. Where you from? Dayton, Ohio. Hey, you think I stole those typewriters? That's right. You kidding? Afraid not. Okay, step back, Roger. Could we move up a little closer Carl with Lindale him? Robbery. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, good. Calm, move it. I'm sorry, my eyes aren't as good as when I was young. Lived there long? Four days. You own a car? No. How long you been in town? Ten days. Where'd you come from? Texas. What city? Dallas. What kind of work do you do? Mechanic. You folks out there hearing? No. Okay, Carl, speak up. Stand up straight. How old are you? Twenty-four. Any weapons on you when you were picked up? Thirty-two revolver. Nickel plated or blue steel? Blue. Not very talkative, are you, Carl? No. Any questions or identifications? I'm sure of it now, Lieutenant. All right, quiet down. He was you one of them. Me sick. You all believe me, I would no. never say it you if I'm not sure. Like I believe you, Mr. Weiss. Something as serious as this, I would be sure if I said anything. Oh, surely. Uh, Sergeant Carga. Yes, Lieutenant. Number four, hold for interrogation. <laughs> The package in Carl and Dell, Ben. Just came in on the teletype. Thanks. Oh, I've been a busy boy, hasn't he? They want him back there when we're through with him. Grand theft auto. Hmm. Three arrests. First in 1944. Only thing he's been arrested for is theft. Well, looks like he got in a little over his head this time. Yeah? Ash has got Lindell out here, Ben. They send him in. Right. Well, let's see what he has to say. Over here. Okay, what's the beef? Don't you know? No, I'm supposed to be a mind reader. Okay, have it your way. We'll bring you up to date. Night before last, a liquor store at the corner of Beverly and 6th was held up. The owner, Mr. Weiss, was shot and killed in the struggle with the thieves. So what? Mrs. Weiss identified you in the line as one of the men. So I tell you, I don't know anything about it. No matter what town you're in, the cops don't change. Witnesses have been known to make mistakes. This one's positive. Okay, so she's positive. I'm positive I didn't have anything to do with it. Where were you night before last? I went to a show. Anybody with you? No, I went by myself. Can you prove you were at the show? No, I told you nobody was with me. Well, what picture did you see? I don't know the name of it. It was a musical. What theater? What difference does it make? You are folks down in Dallas, Carl? No, I don't know where they are. They wouldn't care anyhow. You know you're wanted in Texas? So what? Send me back. Grand theft's better than a murder rap, I call. I didn't kill nobody. Who did, your partner? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Who is your partner? I don't have any partner. I've only been in town for ten days. Made any friends while you've been in town? No. What do you do at night? Stay in my room. What have you been doing in the daytime? Looking for a job. Where? Lots of places. Name one. A garage on 12th Street. What did they say? They didn't need anybody. I'd be working if they did. Want a cigarette? No. You ever been around Beverly and 6th? I don't know. I don't even know where it is. How long you lived in the motel? Ever since I got in town. Ten days. <laughs> Where did your partner go? I don't know. They thought you didn't have a partner. I didn't. What picture did you see three nights ago? I told you I don't remember the name. It was a musical. Why don't you guys let up? I'm telling you the truth. You said you saw the musical night before last. I did. You went to a show two nights in a row? No. You guys got me talking to myself. Just because some half-blind old dame gets a liquor store stuck up, you guys try to make me the patsy. How did you know she was half-blind? I was in on it. But I didn't kill the old man. Earl did it. Earl who? Earl Bentley. 
crazy jerk. He didn't have to either. The old man didn't even have a gun. Whose car did you use? I don't know who it belonged to. Earl stole it. Where does Bentley live? I don't know. Really, really, I don't know. I met him in a bar at 3rd and Washington. High ho. He's got a girlfriend who works there. And hey, what's her name? Jean. Jean Hillard. You seen Earl since the robbery? No. Okay, Ash, I'll lock him up. An unborn baby, an aged grandmother, a Cub Scout, a hardened veteran of the Korean War, people of all kinds, your neighbors, are helped when you give to your local community chest. It's many campaigns in one, and it provides the only financial support for dozens of health, welfare, recreation, and defense organizations in your hometown. They're all counting on a bigger gift from you this year. Don't let them down. Bar girl in the whole place. Yeah. Uh, Jean Hillian? Yes, that's right. Uh, police officers, Miss Hillian. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Cargo. Oh, you want to see the owner? Uh, no, uh, we'd like to talk to you. <laughs> what in the world for? Uh, you know an Earl Bentley? Sure, I know Earl. Uh, when was the last time you saw him? Well, it's been pretty nearly a week. He told me he was going out of town. What's the matter? Is Earl in trouble? Uh, did he say where he was going? No, he just said he was going out of town. He never tells me much about what he does. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Yes, certainly. Good looking. Uh -huh. Vodka Collins and a bourbon and water. You never did answer me. Is Earl in trouble? No, we'd just like to talk to him. Did he say when he was coming back? No, he didn't. But he's never gone for more than a week at a time. Well, does he go out of town often? Oh, about once a month. You know a Carl Lindell? Uh... No. No, I don't think so. He's five foot eleven, dark brown hair, brown eyes. They're from Texas. Oh, yeah, I remember him now. He came in with Earl a couple of times last week. Excuse me. Well, looks like we better go back and have another talk with Lindell. Uh, nothing like setting up an alibi. I think Lindell leveled with us. Hmm? Maybe so. Oh, uh, Gene, does Earl own a car? Yeah, a maroon Ford. A sedan, coupe? Yeah, a coupe. Do you know what year it is? It's a 1949, I think. It's pretty new. And where does he work? Well, I don't know for sure. For his father, I think. He must do all right, though. He always seems to have money. What does his father do? He has a restaurant. Earl mentioned it just the other day. Said he was sick and tired of working in a hash house and was going to get into something better. You know where the restaurant is? Mm-hmm, over on Washington, the coffee cup, 900 block north. I see. Well, thanks, Miss Elliot. Oh, what if Earl should come in? Uh, just don't mention our being here. Oh, I won't if you don't want me to. No, we don't want you to. All right. But I still un can't understand what you want with Earl. Yeah, this okay, Ben? Sure. Uh, well, let's be, gentlemen. Uh... Coffee, ma'am, for me, please. Same. All right. Mm. Clean place, isn't it? Uh huh. Not much business, though. Well, there you are. Two coffees. Anything else? Is that pie any good? <laughs> it better be. I make it myself. Give me a piece of the berry. Sure. Uh, you run this place by yourself? Practically. Wish I could get some good help. <laughs> Even my own son thinks he's too good to work in a lunch counter. This ain't too much of a place, but it's been good to me. I'm going to retire one of these days, and I always figured that Earl, uh, he's my son, I always figured that uh, he could take over someday. Well, maybe he'll change his mind. Not Earl. You know, I started this place 14 years ago. Got a little home around the corner here on 9th Street, all paid for, and I got a little money in the bank. But that ain't good enough for Earl. He's going to make it fast, he says. Where is he now? Earl, I don't know. Never tells me where he's going. You think he's home? I doubt it. Uh, why'd you ask that? Well, I just wondered. You fellas friends of Earl? Not exactly. But we would like to see him. You... 
You fellas are policemen, aren't you? Earl's in some kind of trouble, ain't he? That's right, Mr. Bentley. Mrs. Bentley? Yeah. Police, Mrs. Bentley. Oh. Want to come in? No, thank you. Is Earl here? Nope. He left about two hours ago. Did he leave in his car? Uh-huh. You know when he'll be back? Nope. Earl, don't tell me nothing about what he does. He's in trouble, ain't he? We'd like to talk to him. I knew it. I knew it was bound to happen. Well, how's that? A smart Alec punk. I told his father he was going to get in trouble. Isn't he your boy, too? Nope. He just married his old man last year. How old is Earl? 24. He's old enough to know better. You mind if we have a look around? Nope. But he ain't here. Pete. Yeah, Ben. Check yeah. the house. All right. Uh, where's his room, Mrs. Bentley? Right down the hall. What'd he do? We think he shot a man. He'd have the guts, all right. Smart Alec jerk. Here. I'll take a look. Do you have any idea where he might be? No. Nope. I told you he don't tell me nothing. I have nothing here, Ben. Of course he ain't here. I'd have told you if he was. Uh, may I use your phone, Mrs. Bentley? Sure. Help yourself. It's in the kitchen. Of 415 and 67 and Julia. See the man. Keep the peace. You think you'll come back home, Ben? Sure. Didn't take any clothes. Probably doesn't even know we got Lindell. T43, 914. Code 5 at 631 Cedar. Pick up. Suspect Earl Bentley, age 24. Male, Caucasian, 5'9, 165 pounds, brown hair. Probably driving 1949 Maroon Ford Coupe. If he comes back, they'll get him. You think he'll try anything else? Oh, maybe. If he's as cocky as Mrs. Bentley thinks he is, he won't quit now. T-23, a 390W at 5441 Garden Street. See the man. <laughs> I asked Asher how his kid was. <laughs> yes, yeah, so did I. It sure burns quine up the way Dave goes on about his kid. <laughs> There's one good thing about being single. You never have any trouble like that. <laughs> you want to go up, Madison? Oh, okay. You ever been around Asher's kid? No. Oh, fine. Yeah, uh, you would go up, Madison. Looks like it just happened. Better stop. Is anyone hurt? No. No, I don't think so. I'm not, anyway. Uh, are you the driver of that car? Yeah, the other Joe car came clean across the double line. Took me in the rear fender. Guy she down to turn me over. Didn't he stop? No, I saw him going around the corner, but by the time I got there, well, he was gone. I just now got back here to my car. He, he must have gone to call you guys. Well, there hasn't been any call on this. Oh, gee, that's all right. Units. I'd have called, but I wasn't. All units. Huh? Hold it. Vicinity Cedar and Washington. Oh. A 211 at 1506 Ooh, Acacia. Hey. A liquor store. That's only a few blocks from Suspect here. resembles Earl Bentley. Male, Caucasian. About five foot nine. Let's go, Pete. 165 pounds. Take this street over, Pete. Cuts into Washington. Right. much chance of seeing him. Yeah, there he goes, Pete. He couldn't make the light. He turned off. See if you can make it, Pete. That'll be close, Ben. He you see us, Ben? I don't think so. Yeah. Hey, he's not going to make it. He's making a run for it. Come on, Pete. In that garage. Cover the alley. Right. 
Hey, mister, are you a cop? Yeah. Some guy just came running in the garage. He's got a gun. Yeah, I know. Anyone else in there? No. Well, keep on the cover. Don't worry, that guy's crazy. Bentley? <laughs> Bentley? Yeah? Come on out with your hands up. You can't get away with this. I can try. I'm dead no matter how you take me in. <laughs> You okay, Ben? Yeah. No, I got me two cops. Where is he? In the paint booth. Yeah, come and get me. <laughs> Nervous, Bentley? You're gonna whip the whole police force? I don't have to. There's only two of you. There'll be more. Okay, you win. Throw your gun out. Okay. Come out with your hands over your head. Okay, that's close enough. Face the wall. Put your hands in back of you. Sure. Take it easy, Bentley. Okay, Pete, come on in. Well, you oh, 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 oh. That didn't make much sense, Bentley. Get an ambulance, Pete. Lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call up a number, their name, and charge. Do you have any questions or identification? The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Guthrie with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by David M. Light with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Peter Leeds, High Everback, Virginia Gregg, Howard McNear, Herb Butterfield, Bob Bailey, Sam Edwards, and Jeanette Nolan. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> Presidential election night. As the voting returns pour in from coast to coast, CBS Radio will be ready with one of the most comprehensive reporting jobs in election history. Make CBS Radio your election night headquarters for coverage by Alan Jackson, Lowell Thomas, and Edward R. Murrow. And shortly after, for full-time coverage by the entire CBS Radio news staff. And remember, between now and November 4th, make CBS Radio your election campaign headquarters for all developments clearly, impartially reported. Dan Coverly speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.